So I haven't used this camera for quite a long while because now I use a different camera with a digital back. So this is going to take a bit of setting up. I didn't come with an actual concept about what I wanted to make. I just was really excited to come and take some pictures of the interior. When we took the photograph, all of the walls were orientated. They all move around, which is pretty amazing, orientated so that I had a very um, clear view from here right through the space. Ah, uh, yeah, so it slides back into Exactly, that's it. There was a curator from the museum here helping us. It was quite nice because he said, uh, I've never seen anybody actually take a photograph from that point before. What I immediately liked about the, the view we chose, or I chose, <laughs> was this balance of the elements, the iconic chairs there, but it isn't take, taking the sort of central role in the picture. The way the picture functions is much more in a, as a grid. It's more like a drawing that somebody might make, thinking about how they want the house to feel, rather than an architectural photograph that tries to describe the space. It refers to more things than simply what is it like to describe this house? So these were some of the other angles I did that day. So <laughs> this is a very strange one from the back of the chair. Definitely doesn't work. <laughs> I think I'm about right. So it's come out a bit dark. I can do another one. So this is closer. So one of the things about the Polaroid is it never actually shows you everything you get. So this blue line and this white line would actually be there. Yeah, I'm actually going to try with the other lens. It was one of um, a series that I took at the time. It wasn't about a particular kind of architecture or location. It was to do with a kind of a sense of composition, what I refer to as the middle ground area. It's not about what's right up close or what's a long way away, but this kind of stage set that you're presented with in the middle ground. It was something that echoed in quite a lot of work I did at the time. It simply describes a whole period of work from different locations. Whereas with some other series, it was very much going to a place and making a series of work about a place. Once you've made one picture of something or about something or in a particular location, things get much more complex and interesting if you keep at it, in effect. And you start to see formal relationships between different pictures within the series you also develop a better understanding of how the subject translates into what you end up making. I'm sure lots of artists have sort of key works and moments where they think things suddenly took a leap forward. And I'm really happy to have the Valencia diptych here first when you walk in because for me, it's one of the first works where a lot of things came together. It's a little bit like a lexicon or mm -hmm. something which contains a lot of themes which are actually amplified and repeated as you go around the whole exhibition. I think this is the first time where I really um, managed to get this thing in the picture where it's almost like an empty stage set. And um, the, the sort of relationship between what's not there, the emptiness, and what is there is, is fairly intense. And 
uh, at this time I, I, I always worked with Polaroids, so I made my black and white Polaroid, had a look at it, took the actual shot, and then I walked along and thought, actually it's interesting to do this as well, and set the camera up again. That is that building. Exactly, yeah. When I looked at the Polaroid and put the two together, I suddenly realised, wow, there's some really interesting things going on here. There's a whole load of things to do with space and place going on here, um, different time zones. So um, you, you probably remember this was quite a controversial um, advertising campaign mm -hmm. at the time. United Colours of Benetton. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, of course, I mean, I enjoy sort of verbal ironies and things, so the fact that it's described here in black and white and white, black, and yellow are in, in, in black type. I mean, I find, I find that interesting. Plus, there are actually really interesting uh, graffiti and things as you work your way along the, um, the to two images. So this person, uh, Dave, has sort of... Oh, he's almost got ready for me to turn up and make this piece where he repeats Dave here. Um, there are other classic things from the period, Sex Pistols. And then this in contrast to this almost... Oh, I, only, uh, I only see it now, now that you yeah. did it. I see this man. In, uh, so, so this is, I sort of think of now, as almost the beginnings of companies and that becoming much more global in, in the way they work. But this is actually a mural to do with the very local workers in the docks. And there is actually quite a bit of graffiti here to do with independence and the end of Franco oh, okay, and things. Okay. So there, there's a, an immense amount of history today. And then these two guys seem to be looking backwards in time as they're looking into space. To my mind's eye, they're, they're sort of talking about a building they once knew there or something like that when they were kids. Or, but it's closed know. off anyway. Yeah, but uh, yes, they can't get it. That's yeah. quite important. I mean, all sorts of things like that. I think that if those gates were open, it wouldn't be the same. Um, if the car wasn't there kind of disrupting everything, it wouldn't be quite the same. And is that something that when you position your camera, is, are you looking at it right yeah. then? Yeah, definitely. It's not coming out later, is and, it? And, and when you're talking like this, it's very easy to make it sound like you've conceptualised all this and then put the camera in the right place. In fact, all of this is discovered through the camera, looking through the ground glass with the black cloth over my head and just uh, then coming out looking at it normally again and then into the camera again and moving. So it's actually quite an organic process. A lot of the early works before, before that period, um, things like this, I, I think they were much more about seeing everyday objects as sculptural objects, um, which uh, of course, has a, a, a real echo to people like the Beckers photographing cooling towers as if they were sculptural, as if they were sculptures. Um, but uh, I sort of arrived at that point uh, a little bit unaware of um, that kind of photography. Um, but a lot of this came out of photographing sculpture and being commissioned to do it whilst I was making my own work and then carrying over that kind of ethos of how you document a sculpture, how you show it, wor it working in yeah. space, carrying it into everyday objects. That's amazing, again, the amount of detail. Yeah. The landscape almost has a scarred quality, and, and so does the history. And, and yeah people's memory of what, what's gone on in these and places. How, how did this, in a way, small, diminutive size for something so enormous yeah. was, was decided upon? It didn't feel appropriate. <laughs> so I, more and more I found myself thinking, actually, I would like it to be something more intimate that you've got to walk up to and, and deal with the detail so that it sort of pulls you in. And, Maybe it's uh, slightly romantic, but I, I feel that it, the, 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 the subject matter deserves a respect. Yeah. Maybe we should just have a, have a look at the Black Star, um, one of the Black Star pictures. So, it's... so the, this sequence was taken over about uh, 24 hours. Um, the night, 
and then the early morning with the storm um, and later in the morning when the storm's cleared. And this is the uh, new Whitney Museum of American Art and then this is Ground Zero and the new tower in the background because the, the rooms in the hotel literally are glass floor to ceiling. You come intensely aware of the weather and, and watching the weather coming in and moving. And to contrast that with this uh, sort of temporal progression across, both in time and, and in terms of the weather, um, I think that that sets up a lot of the tension yeah. that, that makes the whole thing work. Um, the thing that I was most taken with was the incredible intensity of the colours in the storm. These dull sort of pinks and uh, magentas against the yellow and the green and the... You talk the like soft. a painter, but still... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People often ask me, well, don't you like people? Because there aren't a lot of people. And that, that isn't really the issue. I, I, the real issue is that um, if somebody crossing the road, removing their hat and putting the cigarette in their mouth dead center in the middle of the picture, then that means that's when that picture was taken, end of story. Uh, whereas if you try to describe the place in a slightly more relaxed, um, ambiguous way, um, the, the time contained and the possible meanings of what you're showing uh, become more complex yeah. than that single moment. Yeah, more universal too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I wasn't taking this very seriously at first. Now I'm really getting into it. Yes, so it's getting closer. It's funny, it's actually really difficult to end up in exactly the same place as when you have taken something before. But, oh, I think it's about right. Yeah, so um, it was a bit more like that. But can you correct it a bit? Maybe, can you zoom back a bit? Out? Whoop, too much? Back in a bit? Yeah, something like that. 